welcome algebra two we are going to cover our last section for this chapter you guys are hanging in there you're doing great section 1.5 um, and we're going to be comparing functions across different representations. All right. Here is your learning target for today. You can write this down so you know what notes are about. Learning target says I can compare two or more functions when they are represented in different ways. And then you're going to be successful. The success criteria here says describe a function in four different representations. All right. Pause if you need to. Again, things in blue, good thing to write down. The main four ways that we can represent our functions are going to be verbal description, all right? Again, that can include anything like max and mins, zeros, what interval are we increasing? What interval are we decreasing? Maybe domain and range, transformations, a verbal description of transformations, all right? So literally, you can describe a function using written words or typed words. Um, you can also use a table of values, right? Table values usually have like x, your input, and then your f of x or y values, your outputs. So if you input this, it does something, you output this, right? So table of values, things you've been using for a long time. Uh, graphs, a literal picture of the function, um, and equations, okay? So f of x equals absolute value of x plus 3. Okay, so here, just a second, we're gonna get used to looking at these things, um, being able to substitute what is missing. So if I said that there's a function, it's a reflection across the x-axis and a vertical shift up three, that could be part of a verbal description. Um, I'm also given the equation here, right? So now I see that it's parent function, again, the simplest function that you would have. It's parent function would be the absolute value function, because um, we see those absolute values there, but it's kind of, covered with a bunch of other crazy stuff like this negative on the out front, negative on the outside, which would represent the reflection across the x-axis, and the plus three, which would be the vertical shift up three units. So, so far it's looking like we are describing the same function here, and we've got a table of values. So the only thing that's missing is a graph of it. Can you make a graph of this thing in your notes? If I were to sketch something, oh, that's terrible. Here's the red. My markers are slowly, slowly dying, so I hope you're able to see okay. If I wanted to get a sketch of this thing in my notes, uh, I'm just going to say, let's, I'm going to draw the parent function, absolute value function. Looks something like that, all right? But again, it's followed by a vertical shift up three and a reflection across the x-axis. So if I reflect it across the x-axis, boom, this thing gets turned upside down, looks something like that, and then I take the dotted one, again, we're just kind of combining our transformations, taking this one and then shifting it up three units. So maybe the final version of it looks like, the final version looks something like this. I guess I can, there we go, all right? So a sketch of this function, Again, we see that reflection, it's now upside down, and then it got shifted up three units. So it, look, it should look something like that. That's one way that you could sketch a graph based off of a verbal description or looking at the transformations on its parent function. Another way that you could do it is, you've got a table of values, just plot the points, right? So uh, at negative two, I'm at one. Again, this is an inaccurate graph. Negative two, I'm at one. At negative one, I'm at two. So it's looking like these would kind of uh, at zero, I got three, that would be my maximum, all right? So, again, you can sketch it just off of verbal description or looking at the equation, or you can just plot some points. So, did our graph look something like that? Yeah, here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. I see that my absolute value function, it's upside down, representing that re uh, reflection across the x-axis, and it got moved up, so we've got that maximum there, at zero three, which again, checks out with our table of values. If I wanted to, how about two, one? This last point should be at two, one. So two, one, yep, that looks good, all right? Again, four different ways that you could represent a function. Okay, 
Here's a new function. Again, just getting used to looking at all of these. Uh, the verbal description says it's a reflection across the x-axis and a horizontal shift right three units. Uh, the graph shows that as well, right? Uh, this looks like a parabola, so I'm thinking my equation should be something x squared, right? Because uh, we're, we're missing an equation, so I'm asking you, can you write an equation based off of these other three things? Uh, we've got a table of values. Looks like things start to kind of check out with the table of values. When x equals 2, y equals negative 1. x equals 3, y equals 0. All right, so I'm looking at those points and the table. Or excuse me, the points in the graph. If I wanted to write an equation for this, let's just call it f of x. Um, I know it's a reflection across the x-axis, which means that I would have a negative on the outside of my function. And again, this, this idea of a parent function, it's going to be something x squared, right? So I'm just going to add parentheses because I don't know what's going to be happening to that. But here's the parent function x squared. I've already determined that that reflection across the x-axis means that I'm going to have a negative on the outside. Horizontal shift right three units. Again, I'm going to the right. I'm shifting this thing right three units. Horizontal shifts, I need to think kind of backwards. So I'm going in the positive direction of x. That would mean the parameter would be on the inside and it would be minus three. All right, so that's why I added parentheses because I knew eventually I was going to have to say there was some sort of parameter controlling that horizontal shift on the inside of my function. That's why I put the negative three, all right, that parameter of negative three, which does the horizontal shifts on the inside of my parentheses. Question about that, let me know, all right. Again, looking at all three of these representations of our function, we could write a equation. Okay, and that's the same thing that we came up with here. Get my pointer on, there we go, all right. Um, last one, it says stretch horizontally, vertical shift down two units, so that's my verbal description. I've also got an equation, f of x equals absolute, absolute value of one half times x, so that looks like um, horizontal stretch, all right, uh, and then minus two on the outside, definitely a vertical shift down, so I see here would be my parent function absolute value. Hopefully you can see that okay. Again, the parent function absolute value would look something like that. Again, this thing got stretched horizontally. I see that it got a little bit fatter. <laughs> and it moved down two units. Everything's shifted down two units from here, okay? From where it would be stretched. The only thing that's missing would be a table of values. So. There's two different ways that you can make a table of values from these. I'm just gonna set up x and f of x. Again, this would be numbers that you input into your function and numbers that you get as an output or your y values. Uh, we could just plug in numbers. I'm gonna say, what if we plugged in zero, all right? So again, one of the ways that you could do is just pick a couple numbers for your input Plug it into your function and see what you get as an output. If I plug in zero into this function, that's going to be absolute value of one half times zero minus two. Okay, one half times zero is just zero, all right? Minus two is negative two. So that means that one of my points on my graph should be at x equals zero and y equals negative two. So a point at 0, negative 2. 0, negative 2, all right? So boom, that was easy. We can get that from our graph as well. So we could just start plugging in some inputs and testing them, or you could look at the graph itself. Well, I can get a, a point to put on my table of values from here for 0. Or what about... Uh, negative two, negative one. All right, so again, 
You could plug in points into that equation to get an input and an output. Or if you have the graph, why not just pick points off of the graph? Same thing, all right? Fantastic. Let's talk about, maybe you, you wanted to compare two different functions, all right? So now we've talked about, okay, there's your table of values that would work as fine as well, all right? I've just picked a couple inputs and I've got some outputs. What if we wanted to compare two functions? So now we've talked about you can represent functions in these four different ways. What if you wanted to compare two different functions? Can we compare them when they're in these different forms as graphs, as verbal descriptions, as equations? So what if we want to just literally compare points from a graph? We could say, uh, how does g of x compare with the apparent absolute value function at x equals negative 3? Whew, that is a lot. But g of x, it says, is negative f of x. And again, we're talking about this parent absolute value function, so I'm going to assume that f of x has to be the most basic absolute value function, if that's the parent function here. So f of x equals absolute value of x. G of x says take f of x and make it negative, all right? So g of x would be negative absolute value of x. So we've got two different functions and we're just asking how do they compare when you're looking at x equals 3? So I can literally just plug in x equals 3 into my functions and see what I get. And that's what I have down right here. So instead of f of x, I'm saying f of 3. So I would take, again, here, x equals 3. I would take 3, plug it into my function, f of x. So I would have absolute value of 3. Again, absolute value of 3 is just 3. Fantastic, woohoo. g of x, okay, now I'm looking for the function g evaluated at 3, again, now, x is equal to 3. I'm going to erase those real quick. So if I take 3 and plug it into my function, I'm going to have negative absolute value of 3. And absolute value of 3 is just 3, but I've still got that negative on the outside, so it's negative 3. All right? Okay, now I can just look at and compare these and say, obviously, 3 is bigger than negative 3. Super exciting. And I can write this as f of 3, which we know is 3, is got to be greater than, and we're using that inequality, the greater than, less than, equal to, f of 3 has got to be greater than g of 3, because again, obviously 3 is going to be greater than a negative 3, okay? So again, just think about when we're comparing, use those inequalities, greater than, less than, equal to, okay? All right, let's look at another example. That was just looking at two functions. Can I plug in a number x equals three, get an output, and then compare them from there, all right? Okay, so with this other problem, it's, it looks like a lot, but it's gonna break down a little bit easier, okay? Compare the functions at the origin. The origin is zero, zero. So we're asking to compare the functions when x equals zero, all right? Uh, f of x, I'm looking at this one here. Let's just see if we can write a function for these, all right? And then we can plug in x equals zero and see what we get. So f of x is a transformation on the absolute value parent function. Already I know that f of x has got something to do with absolute value of x with a horizontal shift left four units, all right? So if I'm going left four units, that would mean I would have a positive four on the inside of the equation, or on the inside of the function. So again, horizontal shift left four units. If you need, look at that transformation rule sheet and convince yourself that this is a transformation left four units. And a vertical shift down four units. So. Minus 4 on the outside, all right? Again, now we're looking at taking that function f. We had a verbal description for it. 
We had some information about it's an absolute value function. We had some transformations. And then we were able to take that representation and trans, uh, you know, translate it into an equation here. So I've got an equation for f of x, and I'm asking to compare when x equals 0. So why not just plug in x equals 0 into this function here and say, I'm going to do this. Uh, my pens are dying. I'm going to do this right here in red again. So when x equals 0, again, now I'm evaluating the function at 0. Here I'm going to plug in 0 plus 4, end of the absolute value, minus 4. All right, and then continue evaluating that expression. So 0 plus 4 is 4. So I got the absolute value of 4 minus 4, which is just <laughs> 4 minus 4 which is just zero, okay? So f of zero is just zero. This function would have a point. It would go through the origin. It would go through zero, zero. Uh, what about that guy? Let's look at g of x and see if we can write an equation for it. g of x is a transformation on the absolute value parent function with a horizontal shift right four units, all right? So same kind of idea. We're working with absolute values. It's going right four units, so negative four on the inside, so a parameter that would control the horizontal shift. Again, for that part about horizontal shift, right four units. And here, look at your transformation rule sheet. Convince yourself that this parameter on the inside of negative four would indicate a uh, transformation uh, horizontal shift, right four units. Oh, awesome, a vertical shift down for units as well. So that one's pretty easy. Again, minus four on the outside. All right. So now we're just asking to look at it when g of zero, can we evaluate this thing at zero? Literally plug zero into this and solve. So when x equals zero, so I've got absolute value of zero minus four, minus four on the outside again. That's absolute value of negative 4 minus 4. Again, absolute value is always going to turn something positive, right? So this is just 4 minus 4, which is just, again, 0, okay? So these functions, when x equals 0, they're both 0. They're at the origin. We can compare these and say that they're both equal when x equals 0. So I can say that, and I'm going to do, how about I do this in purple? f of 0 is equal to g of 0, okay? So f of 0 is equal to g of 0. Again, we were able to plug in some points. Check that out, all right? Pause if you need to. Okay, this one's going to be pretty easy as well. Compare the functions at x equals 1. Now, instead of verbal descriptions, I have a table of values and a graph. Here is a table of values to show f of x and a graph to show g of x. So if I wanted to compare these functions at x equals 1, this one's really easy to say. Just look at your input when x equals 1. Your output would be negative 1. So I know that f of 1 equals negative 1. For this g of x here, again, my input are my x values. So if I go to my x axis and look at when x equals 1, x equals 1 is right here, what's my output? So here's 1. My output is at 2, all right? Because again, this point is at 1 comma 2. So g of 1 g of 1 is going to have an output of 2. And oh my gosh, 2 is greater than negative 1. So g of 1 is greater than f of 1. Okay? That one, I like that one. That one was pretty good. Okay. You know what? We're going to talk about this one in class. 
because it's already about 20 minutes. This one's long, all right? Go to Blackman 107. Come see me. Yes, go to Blackman 107. I'll see you there. Have a great day. Comparing functions. Woohoo!